Jesus. and you got to go mend some things. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Make it right. Amen. My God. People. Make it right. Do it now, he said. Don't hesitate. Amen. He said, make it right now and do it now. Amen. Amen. It may sound hard and God. harsh. But that's that's what he's saying because time is winding up. Amen. There's no time to play around. There's no time to play on the merry go round and go round and around. There's time out now. Them souls out there need to be saved, and they're watching us, and they're listening to you run your mouth. Yeah, Jesus. You to God. Saints without the ass, ain't. Mm. Because this, the, they, they can't come in the house of the Lord because the house of the Lord is contaminated. Oh, mm. my God. My God. He said, my house is still contaminated. And you think the coronavirus did anything? Absolutely not. Because the same demon that ran you out is still roaming. Oh, mm. my God. Jesus. In the house of the Lord. He said, but it's time to get right with God and do it now. Yes. We don't have time. I don't have a clock <laughs> to see if my time is up. But Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. What a word. Amen. Forgiveness. And it has to be genuine. We, we so often can run around here and claim we forgive somebody and claim we love somebody and Whisper all kinds of nothings in our heart and to our significant other and to this one and that one. But God truly knows. He says, I know your thoughts before you even think of them. Oh, so he truly knows yes. what goes on on the inside of us. And he truly knows if yes. we genuinely forgive someone or not. So thank you so much for that beautiful word, Reverend Ruthie. Amen. Amen. Second word today, you will be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. Minister Marie Woods. You're on mute, Minister Marie. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right, thank you, Lord God, for this time, for this moment. I thank you for another opportunity to share your word. I thank you, Father God, that my leaders are going to support me, oh God. I thank you, Father God, for their support, Lord God. I ask that you have your way, Lord. Let the words that come out of my mouth make sense and let somebody receive it, that, that they will be edified and grow. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm coming Amen. from the passage of Luke 23, 43. The New Living Translation says, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. But well, we know paradise, <clears throat> the Bible talks about paradise being the, the garden of Eden where Adam and Eve first lived. The dictionary the description of paradise is a place or a state of bliss, happiness, or delight. When I first got this, this passage of scripture, my first thought was mercy and grace. My thought was, how did the people get an invitation to paradise? I could assume that this man heard about Jesus prior to the cross. After all, Jesus did make a name for himself by the things that he did. Everybody knew who he was. I also could assume that this man walked with Christ at one time, but I could not find evidence of that. I also could assume that he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and his Lord and Savior at one point before the cross, but I'm not going to assume. I see a man who met Jesus on the cross. He met with mercy and grace. Mercy implies compassion that withholds punishing, punishing even when justice demands it. So when the law says you are guilty, mercy says, I got you. Mm -hmm. Grace is unmerited favor of God. And we understand that his, 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 under, his, his unmerited favor of God, his undeserved kindness. Now, in this segment of scripture, there was, this is when Jesus was being crucified. There was two thieves on the cross, one to his left and one to his right. 
the book of Matthew and Mark states that both criminals mocked Jesus. But Luke only tells us that one, one thief mocked Jesus. However, they mocked him. Talk about if you could save, save yourself, you're saving others. They seemed like all the things that Jesus did for other people, but he couldn't even save himself. So they mocked him. But while spending those hours of time with Jesus on the cross, one thief saw something different. He hmm. began, to, began to see the compassion for the people that Jesus had. He began, began to see the unconditional love. He saw strength even in the time of physical and mental weakness. He saw forgiveness. He probably said to himself, what kind of man is this? this these people are killing him and he's having compassion and, and he's showing love. I believe the example that the thief saw in Christ opened up his eyes of understanding, which produced faith and caused him to believe in Jesus. He could not believe in Jesus until he heard about him. And he heard about Jesus on the cross for sure. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Jesus was the word speaking to the thief on the cross. He was the word. Jesus spoke the word to the, to, to, the, to the thief and it produced faith in the thief, which produced belief, which caused salvation to happen. Faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Belief is that you accept it, that you trust it. Salvation, of course, is deliverance from sin and its consequences. Jesus was being an example to the thief when he was showing love and compassion for those who abused him while he was on the cross. He saw Jesus talk and say some things in the cross. I believe the thief was just watching what Jesus was doing. Jesus asked the Father to forgive those who abused him, who hurt him. Jesus made sure his mother was taken care of by giving John to him, giving John to him as her son. He was thirsty, but he did not complain. But I believe Jesus was thirsty for this place, for his place on the throne. I believe he was thirsty for the completion of this process of being on the cross. He told the thief that he would be with him in paradise, even though the thief was a criminal. Jesus asked God, the father, why hast thou forsaken me? He saw Jesus speak to his father on the cross. He gave up his life to the father. He said, father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. He gave up his life. It wasn't taken. He gave it to the father. And then in the end, he said, it was finished. The thief saw the suffering, the love, the compassion that Jesus had for the people and how he spoke to his God. Why would anyone want to forgive people who wronged them the way that they, they did Jesus? I don't believe the thief understood all that was going on because we, we didn't think Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We didn't understand, oh, well, let me use me. I didn't understand everything that was going on at the time, but I believe that he was. The little bit that I it did understand, you know, it, it, it just thrust me into the, the presence of him and wanting to be with him and wanting to love on him. We learn the love and compassion that Christ has for us. We learn how he died for us, how he provided for us. We begin to understand his love in a small way and it, threw, and it drew us near him and we said yes to him. That is what I believe happened to the thief. Acts 16, 31 says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, you and your household. Jesus knew the thief was in need of a savior. Jesus took that opportunity he had with the thief to show love. Jesus was love. I believe the thief knew what the thief did. He knew he was wrong, but he believed Jesus was innocent. The thief said, he told the other thief, we deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I believe Jesus had that time compelled the thief. And Luke 14, 23 says, and the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Jesus had the opportunity on the cross I'm looking at the hedges and highways could be in your kitchen. 
The hedges and highways can be in your backyard. The hedges and highways can be any place that you meet up with somebody that you can share the love of Christ. That's the hedges and highways. And I believe this was the moment. I believe Jesus, this is my thought, I'm saying, I believe Jesus was working on that cross. He was ministering to that thief, telling him the goodness of God, telling him how great his father was. Because Jesus had to know him before he can accept him. And then Jesus, I mean, then the, 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 the thief, accepted him, asking God to remember him when he was in paradise, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he was who he was. After the thief spent time with Jesus, after hearing, you know, um, how I believe Jesus was telling him on the cross how, he, how, how paradise looked how paradise was, how paradise was full of peace, how was paradise, you know, uh, was, was a place of peace and comfort. I believe the peace had then began to long to be in paradise. After hearing about how Jesus is, how heaven is, how paradise, paradise is, we long to be with him in paradise. Let us all strive to get there and bring someone with us. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for how you showed the thief your love, your compassion, your mercy, and your grace will cause the, the, the thief to have love and compassion for you and surrender himself to you. Salvation, Lord God. I thank you for salvation, Lord God. I thank you for salvation for this time, Lord God, in this season, Lord God. I pray the spirit of salvation just be explode at this time. I give you all glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bring, Amen. let's strive to get there. Let's strive to get to paradise and let's strive to bring some people with us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Third word, woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. John 19. 26-27, Minister Gary K. Ross. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. As we take this time of Holy Week, amen, and as we commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Prayers have already been prayed. Protocol has already been established, amen, from the Gospel of John. Amen. The 19th chapter. Uh, I'm going to start at the 25th verse and read through the 27th. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. And so here in the text, we find where there still remains controversy concerning the number of women that were present during this life changing experience at the foot of the cross. However, it may be, we do have consistency of those that were present and that of Mary, his mother, his mother's sister, wherein it is recorded that she was tentatively identified uh, with the name Mary Salome, who was also counted as one and whom were present at the cross during Jesus's crucifixion. Not only that, but she was also uh, the mother of James and John, the apostles, in whom we are rather are familiar with and knowing as the sons of Zebedee. And then we have the Mary, the wife of Cleophas, the mother of James, the younger, and Joseph. The Greek text uses the name Jose. Uh, this Mary was also responsible in this account for bringing the necessary supplies that were needed for burial following the crucifixion of Jesus. Uh, there is controversy that still remains uh, evident where scholars are trying to hash out uh, whether or not Mary, Jesus's mother, and Mary, the wife of Cleophas, are one and the same. And then there was Mary Magdalene. Magdalene, a name that signifies Magdala, a village on the west shore of Galilee, which was 
two or three miles north of Tiberias. It is also noted where uh, Mary Magdalene is a figure that uh, becomes later prominent in the account of his resurrection where uh, Jesus healed her from demon possession. And so while it is that uh, Jesus understood that his time was drawing near, he knew that he could not give the uh, responsibility to his brothers and caring for his mother because they were not sympathetic to his ministry, uh, nor did they believe in him. Furthermore, their home was in Carpanum, uh, which is, uh, uh, and it is perhaps uh, that they were not present at this time. But during this intense experience and the midst of his greatest anguish and suffering and humility for mankind, Christ's attention was not on himself and his needs, but it, he was on the needs of us and amen, and understanding that we needed salvation. Even as he hung on the cross after he had been beaten and now bleeding to death, his focus was on all that the Father was yet accomplishing. Here we are at the foot of the cross. Uh, uh, the pain of watching Jesus die is now agonizing for his loved ones. And watching this uh, horrendous anticipation of death, how many know that a mother's pain uh, for her child is indescribable? And here it is when Mary has a flashback of Jesus at birth where the elderly prophet Simon revealed to her and spoke to her and in the gospel of Luke saying, behold, this child is set up for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. And yea, that a sword were pierce the heart of Mary as she watched her firstborn die. Uh, and, and the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. But in this challenging experience of Mary, his mother knew his absolute perfection uh, better than anyone else. And so as his mother watched crowds of, of people uh, pouring out content on her child, uh, cruelly mocking and abusing him, his bleeding, uh, and now his weak skeletal form as he helplessly hung on the cross. And all his mother could do was watch his agony. And so, amen, it says, behold thy mother. So Mary was standing there displaying a perfect model of courage, a mother that could have easily thrown in the towel, could have perhaps waved the flag DOA. She could have fled the scene of terror, could have even fainted at the hideous sight. But what Mary made, uh, made a decision to do was to stand in the midst of chaos for her child. Jesus saw his mother standing there and grieving at his sight. And as he expressed the third saying from the cross and it exhibits his reflection of tender love of a son for his mother. And as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit realm. You can come for me, you can talk about me, you can even leap and lay a hand on me if you feel froggy enough, but whatever you do, don't mess with mama. It was at that moment where Jesus understood that he had to make a gracious provision for Mary in the years to come. And so he would delegate uh, the assignment to his disciple, John, to care for his mother, his mother, Mary, uh, has now reached an old age. And so despite his dying and uh, excruciating anguish, Jesus, who is the author of our faith and king over love, selflessly turned aside to care for the earthly needs of those who stood by his side. So Jesus was occupied with the most uh, important occasion known to mankind and the history of redemption. But uh, in all of this, he had to make sure that his beneficiary was taken care of. And in more ways than one, does Christ exhibit being more to Mary than just a son? Jesus calls his mother woman, but Mary was not excluded because she also looked upon Jesus as her savior. She was uh, as dependent on divine grace as the lowliest of sinners. Mary was also a disciple and Jesus was her master. 
Mary was blessed because she remained obedient to the word of God, which is also a requirement of any other believer. In the text, John all of a sudden becomes a disciple in whom Jesus loved that perhaps may have overwhelmed him because he himself had to experience the love of Christ and he had to be transformed. It is where he became the apostle of love because he understood the love of God and the love of Christ. So here we have news from a transformed man who was once known for wanting to call down fire from heaven and burn up an entire town has now become the apostle of love. And it is through firsthand experience that he can proclaim as we commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but should have everlasting life. Is there anybody on the line that can conclude in his suffering and shame? He died so that we can have a right to live again. Even though he looked down a while, uh, he hung on the cross and saw his mother in grief. He also put on and bared the sins of humanity. For it was on the rugged cross, an emblem of suffering and shame. And I love the old rugged cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. This, this display and dialogue of his seven sayings as he hung on the cross serves as a reminder and a promise. That dialogue uh, of his seven sayings, amen, that those who believe in him as Lord and Savior over their life, believe on his name and loves him, shall one day receive a crown of life. Open your mouth and shout glory, for he is high and lifted up. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And next we'll have a musical selection by Reverend Robin. Oh, the blood of Jesus singing oh the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, it will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley of the blood. That gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose it. Is Oh, and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, that blood that gives me strength from day. Thank you. 
Sing it. Do it again. Come on. Sing it again. Come on. Hallelujah. To the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, that blood yes, yes, that yes, gives me strength, strength. Yes. from day yes. to day, it will never lose, it will never Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And next, our fourth word, I thirst, John 1928, by Minister Denise River Wood. Amen. <laughs> Dawn. <laughs> God bless you all. So good to see everybody. So good to be here with you. Grace and peace to everyone. Um, and I know I said in the beginning, I just want to say again, it's just an honor to have my mother-in-law here on the line who joined us from uh, Cynthia Wood, who joined us from New York. Uh, and it's just a pleasure. I don't get to see her often because we are a distance away. Um, but a woman of God who um, could not resist being a part of uh, Good Friday service. So um, it's a pleasure and it's just an honor seeing everybody, all my familiar friends. Um, Reverend Robin, thank you for uh, inviting me um, to this special service. And I know this is a serious time, I'm just gonna take a, a moment to say, it's okay if you unmute and you join in with me. It is okay to celebrate. It's okay that I hear your voice because this is a joyous occasion and we are here to celebrate. We, we are not burying anybody tonight. We are celebrating the death and resurrection of Jesus, Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. So I want to hear your voices. I want to hear you rejoicing. I want to hear you celebrating tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. It exciting. I'm not talking about a ritual. I'm talking about a deep down excitement for Jesus Christ. Amen. We are here because of him. We are here because it is his breath that flows Glory through our bodies. God. Amen? Amen. So I'm excited. Amen. I greet you all with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. So my scripture is coming from uh, John, the 19th chapter, the 28th verse. I must pray real quick. Father, thank you for everything that has transpired thus far. Thank you for your word, God, for it is life. We thank you, God, that your word has the power to change. Your yes. word has the power to correct and yes. put us on the right path. Thank yes. you, Father, that you set the table, Father, for us to dine tonight. Thank you, Father, that you've used your speakers and continue to use your speakers, Father. We glorify you tonight. Father, let your continued word, God, just penetrate our hearts and cause change in our lives, God. Not just on the outward appearance, but let our paradigm change. Let our thought process change. Let everything concerning you glorify you. And we ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. So my scripture again is coming from John the 19th chapter. And I'm gonna kind of run into a little bit of what, uh, uh, 
uh, Reverend Gary Ross uh, talked about because uh, mine is a little bit of his. Is that all right? Y'all can say something. Uh, so I'm going to start John the 19th chapter at the 25th verse. And it says, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clophis and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. <clears throat> And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, and we're going to concentrate on verse 28. After this, Jesus, mm -hmm. knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. Now, when I do studying and teaching, I have to kind of go back and I have to, I like to study and break down the words because even a simple word as I thirst, what does that mean? And so I looked up the word thirst and it's a feeling of needing or wanting to drink something, mm -hmm. a strong desire, a craving. How many of us have craved something before? Mm -hmm. I know I do. It's the chocolate thing. <laughs> often associated with dehydration. Thirst is often associated with dehydration. So here in this scripture, we see that the son of God, the king of kings, and we say that often in Christian dumb. We use those titles, but do we really think about what that means? The son of God, the king of kings, the Lord of lords was in need of something. Yes. Something was missing. And how could that be? He's the son of God. He's Jesus, the king. How could something be missing? Mm. How could that didn't make any sense to me? This is Jesus, but he was parched. When they scourged him, scourged, when they scourged him, they whipped him, they beat him, and then they crowned him with thorns. But when they did that to him, if you could think about even pricking your finger, what do you mm -hmm. say? Ouch, or oh my God, a lot of us use that term, oh my God. Jesus never complained. He didn't say, oh, my head, as the, co the crown of thorns was pierced through his skin. He didn't say, oh, my back, as they beat him with the cat of nine tails. They ripped his skin. He didn't say, oh, my back hurts. He never complained. But when the scripture was accomplished, he said, I thirst. He expressed a travail in his soul. Have any, any of us ever travailed, maybe for our children or a loved one, where there is this longing in our soul, a thirsting for something to happen? So I said, what is it? What was it that Jesus was in need of? So I went over to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, uh, 53, chapter 53, verse 4. And Isaiah says, surely, now if we stop there, if we park there, surely is a guarantee. That's a guarantee word. Surely he has borne our griefs. You know, the word for griefs is sickness and carried our sorrows or our pain. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten, or struck with a hard blow by God and afflicted. But here's the, here's the word that, that brings it together. I don't know if any of you have ever studied when you were in school, a conjunction. Um, I love studying words. I love the English language, the conjunction. We used to not pass school with learning this 
this song. Uh, conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hook it, come on, we can have fun tonight. Hooking up words and phrases and clauses, right? So the word but is a conjunction. It's the hookup to the next clause that's contrary to the first one. Y'all didn't get that. The word but is a conjunction. It is a hookup to the next clause that sounds contrary to the first sentence, right? So, but he was wounded for our transgressions. What's a transgression? It's a breaking of a known law. I know we want to sound smart, but I'm going to tell you, y'all, for a long time, I didn't know what a transgression was. I would just quote it. A transgression is a breaking of a known law. He was bruised for our iniquities. That's known sins. That's the things we do that we know we wrong. He was bruised for that. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes... We are, that's present tense. We already are healed. Amen. Some people say we were healed. We are right now. Amen. I'm not going back to what I used to do Amen. to be healed from a, I am healed right now, present tense. So now I'm going to skip over to verse 11. Verse 11, same chapter in Isaiah says, he shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. So remember in the beginning, we were talking about Jesus was travailing. He said, I thirst, but how can a God who made, created everything needs something mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense? <laughs> when Jesus said, I thirst, again, he was travailing, but for what? So let me ask you a question, because as I was studying this and praying, the Lord showed me that even though we are busy in work and service, we are thirsty. We are a thirsty people. We are thirsty for something. <clears throat> Sometimes we feel thirsty or a thirst, and we try to fill it. We try to fill the need with other things. Come on, y'all, walk with me. Yes, we yes. try to fill the need with other things. Mm -hmm. I remember a time in my life when God was calling me into ministry mm -hmm. and, I, and I was thirsty and I would go to the refrigerator and get a piece of fried chicken. <laughs> it doesn't fill the need, y'all. No. There is a thirst that needs to be filled by something other than people. Yeah. by something other than substances. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Something other than uh, uh, things that we do to fill our lives when really in actuality, it is a thirst spiritually mm -hmm. yes. that needs to be filled. Amen? And the food thing, you can be thirsty and eat and gain weight and you still will long for something when it's over because there is a thirst that can only be filled by one thing. Uh, so Jesus thirsted, what did he thirst for? He thirsted for the glorifying of God. He thirsted for the glory of God because as he hung on that cross mm -hmm. and he bore our sicknesses and our griefs, he was separated mm -hmm. from the father y'all. Yeah. And the sin that we have in our lives, the things that we do, the transgressions mm -hmm. that we do, yes, it separates us from the father. Yes. So it creates a thirst for God because here's the thing, here's the caveat. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. God gave you a thirst that only mm -hmm. he can fill. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. He gave you something that only he, now that doesn't make sense, but he gave you a thirst. And sometimes we try to fill it with relationships. Mm -hmm. you know? Sometimes yeah. we try to fill it 
with, you know, dating and doing different things and mm-hmm. being out. Sometimes we want to go to casino uh, and fill it with that, or uh, we will substitute other things. But it's a thirst, it's a spiritual thirst that only mm-hmm. He can fill. So I encourage you tonight, and my prayer is that the word penetrates. Because again, we can be in ministry, being real busy. Larnell Harris wrote a song many, many years ago. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it, but it was a song that God gave him where God said, I miss my time with you. Mm. Those moments together. I need to be with you each day. And it hurts me when you say, you're so busy, but you're busy trying to serve me. How can you serve me when your spirit's empty? Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are moving through time with empty spirits because Mm -hmm. the thirst is not being fulfilled by the one and only God that can fill it. Stop looking for it in other people. You'll never get it. Stop Mm -hmm. making other people responsible for filling your life. You'll never get it. Stop looking for it in substances because you'll never get it. Stop looking for it on the job. Stop looking for it in your spouse. Stop looking for it in your friends. You'll never get it. I love my husband. I love him with my life. And some of y'all know he's the best man I've ever met in, in, (laughs) in, in the world. But there's things he cannot fill. Yes. I have to go to God yes. to get it filled. So I encourage you, men and women of God, don't fake your way through this because the time is now that yes. we have to get the filling from God. Don't yes. be like a cake. When you're supposed to be a cake, you know, you have two layers and there's supposed to be a filling and the filling's missing. When the <laughs> filling is missing, it throws yes. the recipe off. It don't <laughs> taste the same. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you, y'all, if you're thirsty, go get it from God. Stop using other things to substitute the real relationship. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about relationship. Jesus had such a relationship with God because they were one that when he was separated, he longed for him. What are you longing for? My Jesus. Amen. And I leave you with that. God bless you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Jesus. Mm, glory, God. Jesus. Jesus, glory, God. Thank you, Lord. Um, I'm going to apologize. I mixed up this fourth and fifth speaker. Um, with that being said, our fifth word, fourth. my God, fourth word, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Matthew 26, 47, by Pastor Macy Watson, Jr. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise he is worthy to be praised. Yes. I was just enjoying everybody. I, yeah, I could have kept on going. Amen. Glory to God. Giving honor to God, who's not only the head of my life, but who is my life, to Pastor Robin uh, for inviting me That's on you. tonight and to all the clergy. Everyone did a wonderful job. Amen. Um, and I'm doing the fourth word, and it says, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? A son's prayer, if I can title it on tonight. As we know about this time, Jesus has suffered. He's been beaten. He's been battered, bruised blood streaming down his body, open bloody wounds, and blood streaming down his legs, which are now weak. The same legs that brought him from Bethlehem, Nazareth, Canaan, to 
Bethany to Galilee to Jericho and Jerusalem, uh, and one time even brought him across the water. Uh huh. He also finds it difficult, uh huh, in this situation probably to breathe, uh huh, the same breath that told Lazarus to come forth, the breath that once said, Our Father, with art in heaven, the same breath that said, Take up your bed and walk, uh, the same breath that said, Your faith has indeed made you whole and well, live blessed. Uh -huh. He finds himself uh -huh, hanging on this cross and offering up a prayer. And the prayer he is now offering up is trying to get the attention of his father. Many of us on this Zoom call tonight, we pray a whole lot. And whenever we have a situation that is way beyond our reach or our control, huh, we begin to cry out, anybody know what I'm talking about on here tonight? Huh? If I can be real, uh -huh, sometimes when we cry out, it's, it seems like it's not pure. Sometimes we come out or we go out to church or whether we're in our homes and we want to cry out in a nice, cute way. Huh? But whenever your back is up against the wall. Huh? Whenever you're dealing with challenges you cannot handle, uh -huh, you will cry out with a uh -huh, never ending uh -huh, loud voice uh -huh, and you will cry out like never before. Even though Jesus is the son of God, we still see him displaying how we ought to cry out to the Lord. How many of you can still cry out when all hell is breaking loose in your mm. life? A lot of us today don't really know how to cry out. You mm. just figured if someone gave me a few dollars or a little chain change, uh -huh, that would solve the problem. But money is not always the answer. There comes a point in time in your life that you realize that money and people cannot help you, but a cry to your father will. So here Jesus is in pain, distress, tired. He's been sped on. He's been humili uh, excuse me, humiliated. And he's displaying for all of us on here tonight that no matter what it looks like, no matter what kind of hell you had to go through, that you still ought to go to God in prayer. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Somebody ought to shout prayer. Uh -huh. oh. If I can just pause oh. right there. Uh -huh. If I can pause right there for just a second. Y'all remember MC Hammer? I used to try to do all of his moves in my younger days, uh, but he had a song out entitled, uh -huh, You Got to Pray Just to Make It Today. How many know prayer still works? Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. Okay, y'all, y'all been saved all your life. I understand. Let me get back to what I was talking about. Uh -huh. When you go to God in prayer, it's not a time to be cute or pretty. But it's a time to open up your mouth and howl. Yeah. Make some noise and sound the alarm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Lord, I need your help. Huh? Mm -hmm. I need 411 information for my 911 emergency. <laughs> I need your direction. And I need your help for this situation. A lot of us have been talking and praying to God, but many of us haven't gotten to the point where we got to open up our mouths and say, I lead you, Lord. Uh-huh. I need you scream it to the top of your uh, lungs, uh-huh, to help me right now. Uh-huh. Uh so here is the Son of God, uh-huh, hanging on the cross. And he's crying out to his father, but yet at the same time, he feels as though he has been cast. I know, uh-huh, you see the suffering. I know he's still cast away. He said, I know you see the suffering. I know you see how they sped on me. I know you heard how they humiliated me. Uh-huh, Father, why have you forsaken me? Uh-huh, I just stopped by to tell you this evening, uh-huh, 
When you can't trace God, just know that he's still there. Huh? The God in heaven, whenever there is sin present, uh -huh, he doesn't cross the line, but he has you to understand that sin cannot come where he is. And wherever you are, if you cry out, he will come right where you are. Uh huh. He will come right where you are. As I get back to the text, the Bible to the Bible, he feels cast away, and that my father has forsaken me. Huh? See, I needed help with this uh, text and understanding the whole backdrop of it. Uh huh. Uh huh. If I can pause for just a few minutes and tell you a story. Uh huh. I was. I'm at work and I'm FaceTiming on my break and my lunch break, uh, my son, uh-huh, we're on a FaceTime call. And sometimes when he sees me on the call, he does not understand, uh-huh. So uh, he reaches for me, he stretches out his hands to me, uh-huh. And I say, mm -hmm. I can't get to you. He tears begin to fall down his face. Mm -hmm. uh, I say, I can't get to you right now, baby, but just give me a few hours and daddy will be home. Huh? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Oh, somebody missed it right there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So the Lord helped me to understand. And I want you to know on Jesus, tonight, Jesus. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I want you to know wherever sin is. He let me know that wherever sin is, that's what Jesus did there. With so much sin, I couldn't go there where he was. Uh huh. But in a few days, huh, not too many days from now, huh, I'm going to raise him up from the grave, huh. And I come to tell somebody on here tonight, huh. No matter what you go through, no matter what you have to face, no matter what hell you had to endure, huh, I come to tell you on tonight, huh, that in a few days, uh huh. Mm. huh Daddy will show up, huh? Yes. yes, he will, huh? Oh, if you just cry out with a loud voice, huh? Uh huh. Just know that God is still there. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, God. Glory Hallelujah, to God. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, yes, Lord. Glory, yes. glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. And next, we will have a tribute to the cross by Sister Brianna Ross. Amen. <laughs> I've been terrible. I think I better fix the world. Good evening, everybody. I feel better now. <clears throat> Are you better now? Give I give honor to God, my pastor, and each of you. When I think about the cross and what it means to me, I think of how you died that day at Calvary. March from court to court, march from king to king, all the while you remained quiet, you never said a thing. You were never guilty, they didn't have a case. The sacrifice you made was for the entire human race. A crown of thorns on your head, nails in your hands and feet. They whipped you all night long, for me you took the heat. You carried up the cross, a journey up that hill, agonizing in so much pain, yet you continued to think of me still. You pushed your pain aside. So many watched and cried, still thinking of others. You hung, bled, and died. I could never, ever repay you for what you've done for me over 2,000 years ago on that cross at Calvary. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Amen. 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 Beautiful, Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. And next, our sixth word. It is finished. John nineteen thirty, by Minister Irma Grayboy Ross. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Auntie, uh, you're muted. Let's see. How about now? Can you hear okay. me now? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank God for the privilege to be here. It is an honor, praise God. To everyone, the word that has already gone forth, we do give God the praise. Amen. Amen. It is finished. John 19. Gave up the ghost. This is our Lord and King that it is fit that his father had given to complete. Christ poured out of his soul as an offering for sin. Therefore, the depth of sin for mankind was forever paid. The finishing of Christ's redemptive work on the cross was the finishing of all of these. Colossians 2 and 14 states, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. The works done by Jesus as a man on earth were finished. His blood was shed and the sacrifice was made. Christ shed his blood for you and I. One hymn writer said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Yes. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, yeah. There's a lot going on in the world today. A lot of folk are walking around broken, hurt, sad, and some are just mad for whatever reason. But if they connect with Jesus Christ, they will never be the same. Acts 2 and 38 says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. God loves us so much as stated in John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hebrews 12 and 1 states, wherefore seeing, we also are compassed with about, with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. When someone is about to enter a race, praise God, or run a marathon, they begin to train. So in order to have the endurance to finish the race and run well. I'm reminded of the runner who trained for months so that he could finish the race and hopefully win. During the race, he and some of the other runners, praise God, they got tangled up and they began to run into each other. He had a horrible fall. The fall left him limping and bloody, praise God. But yet he decided to get back up and keep on running. When he finally made it to the finish line, which was about an hour after the race was run, he asked, why did you continue in the race? He stated, I did not come thousands of miles and work so hard to join the race and not finish. As believers on today, praise God, in the race called life, we may run into some obstacles. We may eat it bruised and bloody. Sometimes we will have to keep moving, although we are limping. But whatever the test, praise God, we must stay in the race. Yes, so yes. when it is all said and done, praise God, we can be like 2 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. I have fought a good fight. Yes. I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not me only, but unto all them also that love Jesus, his appearance. Jesus, Jesus. It is finished, praise God. Stay in the race. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you. you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Glory, God. Thank you, God. And Thank our you. next, our, our seventh word, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Luke 23, 26, by Reverend Dr. Crystal Weiss. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Be glad in it. Yes. So we're on a Zoom call on tonight, but our Father is the man who deserves the glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Give him my praise on tonight. Glory God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Glory to you. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Your name. Hallelujah. I certainly give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am yes. absolutely nothing without him. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I acknowledge that I am nothing without him. I need him. Hallelujah. I can't do nothing without him. So I give him honor on tonight. Glory be to God. I certainly give honor to uh, Pastor Robin Ross and to all the clergy in bless your respective you. places. God bless every one of you that's here on tonight. Hallelujah. So my text is coming from uh, Luke 23 and 46. And as we all know, protocol has been established. Glory be to God. And the word of the Lord reads, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. All oh, glory be to God. Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. So let us talk a little bit about the narrative leading up to Jesus' final words on the cross. It was about 3 p.m. in the afternoon when Jesus said his last words and died. It had been a long time since the night before when he had left the upper room to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. There had been about eight hours of uninterrupted stress, strain, struggle, agony of the mind and pain in the body. Jesus yeah. had no sleep the night before because this was the time after he had been apprehended in the garden and spent time going from court to court. Jesus had gone from Ananias to Caiaphas to Pilate to Herod and then back to Pilate. Amen, somebody. In between these trips, the soldiers had amused themselves by mocking Jesus, by putting him on a stump and placing a reed in his hand as though he were a king, followed by hitting him with the reed and spitting on him. Mm. Beyond all this was the heavy sorrow of knowing that his own people had every chance of knowing better and doing better. How many of you know on tonight that when you know better, you ought to do better? Oh, yeah. Amen. Glory be to God. The sad thing about it all is that they seen his work. They saw his miracles. They heard his preaching. They heard his teaching. But yet they blinded themselves deliberately, even after Pilate had said that the man being tried was innocent. Hallelujah. Finally, Jesus had taken on his shoulders the heavy cross and walked up to the hill of Calvary just outside the city wall. There he had been stripped of his garments and nailed with three large nails to the cross. Besides this pain he had endured in his body, there was a deep anguish of thinking about the loss of many souls who would not profit from his sacrifice. Jesus saw those gathered beneath the cross who would continue to ridicule him. Amen. Although he could have called legions of angels to help him, he saw the people of all centuries who in pride and disobedience along with sensuality and deliberately would reject him and his church. Mm. My brothers and sisters, to make matters worse, there was desolation of spirit leading Jesus to cry out, asking God, why have thou forsaken me? truly taken upon himself the full weight of sin, even to feeling cut off from his father. Paul tells us, therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our, our merciful and faithful yes, high yes, yes. before God. Then he can offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. The last words of Jesus were cried out with a loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He spoke these final words with confidence, although he was suffering and in pain. Indeed, Jesus had endured enough suffering and pain to cause death, but he never forgot, and I love this about him, that he is the master of life and death. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. oh, yes. Hallelujah. I said he's the master of life and death. 
The pain and suffering he endured may have killed his body, but it could not kill his spirit. Who am I talking to on tonight? I don't care what you're going through. It may be sickness. It may be disease. It may be pain. It may be suffering. It may come to try to kill, steal, and destroy you. It can do all of that, but it can't kill your spirit as long as you're connected to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. There are three times, my brothers and sisters, we should consider praying these final words. They were words of prayer. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The first time could be and should be as a part of our evening prayers. The second time could be, should be after Holy Communion. And the third time, could be, should be at the hour of death. First, we should use them each evening as part of our prayers. Why, you may be asking? Well, you see, when night comes and another day is over, so was another part of our life here on earth as each day is a miniature life, amen? Each time a person lies down to sleep, he or she gives up conscious control of life, amen? And understand on tonight, sleep is an imitation of death. So sometimes death is referred to as a long sleep. Remember in Mark 5, 38 and 39, which says they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. Verse 39 says, and when he had entered, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. Oh, I can't get no help in here on tonight. Here then is a good time to remember that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And all life comes from God and God alone. Amen. Therefore, if we use the words into thy hands, I commend my spirit in the right way. When we're praying, all these things give glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. And if we never wake up from our sleep, then our last words or among our very last words will have been the same as the words of Christ on the cross. Glory be to God. The second time, hallelujah, we should speak the words into thy hands, I commend my spirit, is after receiving holy communion. You see, during this time, we address these words to our Lord who is present within us that will have meaning of perfect resignation to the will of God and directing of life on earth. You see, praying these words after taking Holy Communion has further special meaning, and that is the giving of self to be remade in the image of Christ. Does anybody want to be more like him on tonight? Mm -hmm. communion, we are giving over, hallelujah, we are giving over the direction and the formation of our soul, our spirit to Christ himself, who is the ultimate reason for receiving Holy Communion to be made more like him. Can I get a witness? Amen. Oh, you see, Paul wrote in Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Our hearts and minds ought to want to become more and more like that of Jesus. We ought to love the same things he loves. We ought to will the same way he wills. We ought to be sorrowful the same way he is sorrowful in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Therefore, when we say after communion, into thy hands I commend my spirit. We intentionally mean to give over our soul to Christ, asking him to mold it and make it more like his own image. Hallelujah. Knowing that he knows what is best for us. Glory be to God. In my closing on tonight, hallelujah, the third time we should use the words into thy hands, I commend my spirit is at the final hour of death. I know nobody likes to talk about death, but how many of you know we're just here on a, uh, we're just, we're just pilgriming through. We're just, we're just journeying through. We're passing through. Amen. Glory be to God. The third time we should use the words into thy hands, 
I commend my spirit is at the final hour of death. You see, during this time, we can offer our life to God and accept death according to his will. Just think about it. It would be hard. It would be hard to find better final words. Glory be to God. It would be hard to find better final words than the final words of the Lord to express, oh my God, the willing acceptance of death and the willing offering of life to God. Hallelujah. People remember us by our last words, hallelujah. People will remember us when we pass on from life to death, from death to life rather, they'll remember our final words, glory be to God. And perhaps for some people, it may seem like a small thing to offer one's life to God. Oh my God, to accept death willingly, but it is not. I said it is not. Cynics may say that that it is a small thing since a person cannot do anything about it anyway. But for one to offer their life, hallelujah, even though death is inevitable, it is never a small thing. Oh, to offer our lives back unto him, to pray that prayer in our final hour before we take our last breath, amen, because it's a part of our prayer life anyways. So even if we don't say it right before we cross over from death to life, amen, before we go into sleep, we know that we have cultivated this thing in our prayer life. And one of the last things we have said is, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. In other words, God, I trust you with my whole life. God, I trust you with every situation. God, I trust Amen. you with every Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God, you, even if I can't see my way out, Father, I commend, I commend yes, my spirit. Yes, Lord, glory. My spirit, my spirit, my spirit, which is alive in you, Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. I give you back my spirit. Yes, Hallelujah. Jesus. To be more Hallelujah. like you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful and thankful on tonight that he is the resurrection and the life. This is the day that the Lord has made and he commanded that we rejoice and be glad in it. Glory be to God. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, next, we will be having closing remarks by Reverend Robin Ross. Praise God. Praise God. I want everybody to unmute yourselves and just give all of our preachers Hallelujah. a hand. Glory clap. to God. Thank Thank you. You. What a phenomenal job you all did on tonight. We just thank and praise God for each and every word that went forth. What a way to celebrate this Good Friday Amen. evening by as coming to the presence of God with like-minded believers who have hearts after God, who loves his word, who took the time to study his words. See, that lets me know you love his word a little something because you took your time to study. You didn't come Amen. up here as a whimsical person not knowing what you were talking about. So I thank and praise God that you got the, 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 the Bible says study to show yourself approved, rightly divided in the word of God. I thank God that each, each of you have taken the time to study to show yourselves approved. I thank you for letting God use you on this evening. I thank you for being a part of service and I just Praise God for each and every one of you and for all those who came on to help support the speakers on tonight. God bless you. I, I pray God's choicest blessings upon you. So we just thank and praise God for what was done in this place tonight. I pray that you all will take something from this good evening service from each speaker that spoke on tonight. Did they not speak from their hearts? Did our not hearts not burn within us from the word that was released out of their loins? by the hand of the almighty God. So we just thank and praise God for everything that happened in this service on tonight. And um, I just want to say, God bless you. Thank you. I don't want to keep you because I know some of us have been in two and th even three services today. I thank and praise God for uh, Pastor Howard Daniel. I see that he is on. Um, if there's anything that you'd like to say, Pastor Howard Daniel, please unmute yourself and feel free to speak now at this time. Well, praise the Lord and God bless you, Pastor. And I thank God for the service tonight. We weren't able to do a service. We didn't plan one. So it's great to be able to attend a service tonight. So I thank you for your innovation, ingenuity. And I want to commend all the speakers tonight. And it was good seeing uh, Pastor Watson uh, again. So thank God for those from the Upper Room Christian that represented, uh, represented well. So thank you. 
Yes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. I, you know, when, when God was giving me people to, to choose for tonight, I, when I went back and looked at it, I said, "What I got a lot of them from upper room. <laughs> was that coincidence or, you know, but God, he knows what he's doing. So I just truly thank and praise God. And as your pastor said, you did represent, but I thank God for each and every one of you. I pray that you will continue to keep your hands in the hands of the Lord um, and just keep on serving him with all your might. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Time really is winding up. A lot of times we hear that and we think that it's cliche and we think, oh, yeah, well, mm. Jesus hasn't come back yet, but Jesus really is coming back. And now is the time to truly stand for him, stand firm on his word, because we know that only what we do for Christ will last. Nothing else. As yes. Solomon said, when I got to the end of my life and I realized everything that took place in my life. All of it was vanity, except what I had done for the Lord. So that's yes. the same attitude that we have to have. We have to get out there. We have to forgive, as Sister Ruthie said. We have to learn to love. We have to be his arms. We have to be his ears. We have to be his eyes. We have to be those who are in the earth mm. truly representing God, not just talking it from our mouth, mm. but being that example that somebody may see the light that is in us Thank and Jesus. somebody may go and Thank cry you, out, Jesus. what must I do to be saved? So yeah. I truly thank and praise God for each and every one you and I pray that we will carry our light further than this virtual service tonight and let it so shine that men may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven because that is truly why we were called that is truly why we're here is to bring God all the glory and all the honor so I just thank each and every one of you now we're going to have our benediction by Minister Darlene Lilly praise God praise God oh God and as we leave this line god but not from your presence god that word have we hid in our heart god that it will keep us strong in you god and now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present your faultless before the presence of his glory and with exceedingly joy to the only wise god our sa our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore Amen and amen. And may everyone have a blessed, wonderful, glorious night. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen. Amen. God, God bless, bless everybody. everybody. Have a Be wonderful safe. night. Amen. Bless. Amen. Blessings to everyone. Have a great evening and Blessings. happy resurrection. Happy resurrection. Happy resurrection. Amen. Amen. Happy resurrection. All right, how do I get out of this? Leave the meeting. Oh, look at the baby. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. Baby. My Keisha, when you coming on to preach for me? You are mute. <laughs> whenever, whenever, um, Pastor Ross, whenever, whenever. All right. Don't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold you to that now. Let me know. Let All me right. know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Have a good night. You too. All right. <laughs> All right. Minister Michael Ross. Minister Michael Ross. Hey. God bless you. God bless you. How you doing? I'm sorry that I was a little late. Yeah, you must have fell asleep. I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was there. Yeah, Robin, Robin, Robin I'm, I'm so proud of you. God is good. God I am so good. proud. I am so proud of you that, that you created this. God is this good. Is, God, this was God. This is so. I can't wait for that building, though. <laughs> you go again. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Hey, the hey. Church uh, is in here. Yeah, but how, how how are we supposed to do it? And you you moving to Georgia? Well, online. Uh -uh. Not, not me. Hi, Debbie. Yeah, online. Well, it's not no change. Always good to see you, Master Ross. What a blessing you are. Yes, I'm glad to see you feeling better. Yeah, I'm not fully out out the out the woods, but you know. Well, got the I got, I got, I got the coronavirus 2023. Oh, 2023? What the world? <laughs> it's the mutated one. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, he is so I, aggy. I, 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 I never I, heard I, of that. I, I am going to get the vaccine, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get it too, Deb? Yeah, I go for my appointment um in a couple of weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dawn's getting it when we go down there. Yeah. When yeah. are you leaving? What do you, what do you want? One or two? Rob, Michael, Rob, you got to get it, though, because of your heart, right? Yeah, I got I to gotta get it anyway. When are you leaving? Five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. With when? Five o'clock in the morning. Who? <laughs> Me and Deb, Alizé, and Kayla, and Jade. Oh, I was good. Oh, we got two cars going down. Two cars deep. I want to go. Those cattles. Those cattles. You got to get here by five o'clock in the morning. Man. Okay. Well, see, there's a Actually, thing. we got we to go. Well, we go on, we go on uh, Merritt Parkway because we're going to be going 84, 84 to 81. 84, 81 okay. to 40 yes. to 70. That's, that's, that's the quickest way. Well. Sailing. Well, right, so, I'm, I'm going to kind of need you to come this mm -hmm. way to get more. Right. Like that will get Debbie in the morning. Uh, how much? How much? How much? Will, how much will? It, how much will it take? Huh? How much will it take to get down there and back? Gas? Yeah. Like, it's got. Uh, yeah, it's got. Uh, my car eats gas like crazy. It's gonna be two between two and three fifty to get down there. No, but on highways it's different. It works different. It, yeah, it might burn a little bit different on the highway. But uh, well, right, I'm a, I'm a, do on answer phone when I call you back. Well, what? Not right now. We we we. Um... Yeah, I know. I gotta make arrangements. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, okay, ladies and. Can okay, I pass the Robinson? Oh, nice, Thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Love you. How's your new place going? Love you too. How's your new place going? It's going fine. They haven't delivered my furniture yet. We still sleeping on the floor. Oh, okay. I got a couple of air mattresses. You want those? Yes, please. Reach out to me on Messenger and, and um give me your number so I can get your address when I get back. You're in Meriden, right? No, I'm in Waterbury, Connecticut. Waterbury. Oh, we could drop them on the way. Um, yeah, because I think we're going through what a bit, but we leave leaving here like five in the morning, though. Okay, I'll be up. All right, so we'll drop them on the way going. So reach out to me and Mr. And, and give me your address. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, you drop them. Um, I'll call you later. Okay. Yeah, because we're going through whatever anyways, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we're going through whatever anyways. That's the way it takes us up the highway. No, no, no. Not if you're going down Merritt Parkway. No, that so I think we go we go, we go to Waterbury, don't we? Waterbury, yeah. Waterbury to go to, to New York, oh, right? Yeah, because yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna need you to come get me in the morning. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, Yeah, you know what I mean, man. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. He's so bad. That's he is so bad. Huh? If you want me to wait, I'll I'll wait till you get back or whatever. You know? All right. Okay. Debbie, was your yeah. dog cutting up? Yeah. I'm um. Debbie, was your puppy cutting up? Uh, um, I might be. I might actually be leaving in, in August because I'm trying to move to Georgia. And if I do, I'll have you come look through my house and see whatever you want because I'll be giving everything away. Oh, you gotta tag after. Gonna come after. All right, I'll, I'll, reach, I'll reach out to you. Um, yeah, after. reach out, reach out, on Mester, and just give me your number, and, and we'll exchange numbers that way. We can talk that way. Okay. I'll All right, hon. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. May May, where's Gina at work? Okay. Look at that beautiful dog. She's right here. She's on the call. Oh, that's Regina. Always she get me with that iPhone. <laughs> get up a bit. Get up. My dog is beautiful. Get out of it. Which one? Look at that dog. It's so beautiful. Where? Debbie's dog. Oh, that's a pit bull. Yeah. It's a puppy. Get, it Get up of the stuff. Oh, He's so bad. He's so bad. I gotta go get some. I gotta gas up. Actually, if I gotta get Debbie. Is there any gas station open there in the morning? Your way, Debbie? It, it, mm, yeah. Come on. You it is? Yeah. All right. Come on.
Hmm? No, I'm gonna gas up because once I get there, I gas up, then we hit the highway. If I gas up tonight, then I gotta waste gas go over there, and then it's gonna burn out. Then I want I want it completely on full when we when we go towards the highway. Completely full. So once I get there, we get the gas, we full and head up the highway. He's so bad. Bring that dog. Boy, you trying to get the baby clothes? He's so bad. <laughs> he is so bad. This yeah. is another car. See, that was good. Seven to eight thirty, hour and a half wasn't bad at all. My TV, something, one of them cars. My TV, huh? my TV huh? must come to Georgia. Oh, oh man, I, uh, there's no space to take cars in the TV. I ain't even on the thing yet. Uh huh. Get the getting. How that? I need, I need that TV in that spare room for Kayla. Kayla, Kayla, Kayla. think she got her phone. But nah, nah. Take it when you go back. No, because I don't know. I'm getting back. Jane! Oh, 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 oh. Better find that little $39 flight. You know what I'm saying? They got them. They, they had one cheap. It's $26. Remember I told you. But you have to lay, you will you be laid over for a minute. I got the dog. $26. $26. No, but the dog's going to have it. I was trying to try to book us a flight to California, but September's so we go out there for a week in September. Why? Them tickets was expensive. I have been confused. Huh? Cousin Lisa, she got confused. She got some who? She got confused. Yeah, she didn't come on. She said, I don't know what happened. I don't know. I don't know. I got. She got. Yeah, but because I had texted like an hour before, I and um. Through the program. And she said, I'll be on. Now, I don't know what happened. Me neither, unless you were kind of on. But be you also ready. Thank you for stepping in. Yeah. Yeah. How about I, I forgot to start? Re I always forget to hit record. No, you didn't. I remember at the end of Ruthie's sermon I to hit record. You. So I missed her whole sermon. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. But church oh, good. Lord. I'm still recording. Jesus. Denise. Tore it up. Have a good night, ladies.